Hello, and welcome to Footnotes. I'm Victoria. I'm Chloe. And I'm Matthew. And we're here to chat a little bit about our last session and some of our favorite topics about Dungeons and Dragons. We've had a lot of adventures with some fantastic players. A lot has happened. A lot sure. has happened. It's been 25 sessions, and a lot has happened. 25 yeah. sessions. We've closed a large. I, I would I would call this the the end of a an arc, a major story of an era. Um, of an era, end of an era. No, <laughs> so we've 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 gone through quite a bit together, uh, mm -hmm. and these two here are no small part of that adventure. I'm kind of excited for tonight because I get to kind of just like last session, how our players got to sit back, relax, relax on a boat. Tonight, I get to kind of just enjoy what's going on, how you felt about this first story, and where's your boat? The boat is off camera, <laughs> and it's not for it's not for the, our viewers, I'm afraid. Oh, here, let's let Victoria have more, more space. I'm so sorry, Victoria. We're trying to rock you off the boat. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I can. So, what do you want to talk about tonight, bit. Victoria? Well, I think probably some of the biggest things that have happened in the last month have been we infiltrated and fought our first true BBEG of the campaign. I'd say we fought like smaller enemies and like some annoyances and people that we haven't really liked very much. But I'd say this was our first big evil bad guy. So I think I kind of sure. want to start there for now. But then I know that we also, our last session, we had some downtime that I thought was pretty fun. And it's always interesting to see how each person responds to downtime and kind of what their plans are. Yeah. So I'd like to get into that a little bit too. But I think first that fight we had over the last month really was Zarethal. It's always fun to slice any man in half, truly. Or I guess woman or non-binary person. Yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> just provided that they're doing evil activities. Right, all, regardless of gender, villains can be valid and bisected. And to have somebody bisecting somebody at the table felt like a very great, you know, just return to form. We, in our last campaign. It's still our table. Yeah, it's still our table. We still have somebody bisecting our enemies, which is a weird thing to say. It's like, oh, we're back to normal, guys. We bisected somebody. The new normal, it's just a different person bisecting yeah. them. Yeah. You know, kind of going into that, the way that Connor sort of tracks critical hits now for us, mm -hmm. um, it's... Connor, in our previous campaign back before we started Stories D4, actually did a lot of that bisecting like you were talking about. And kind of the joke came from the fact that he crit no less than seven major enemies to finish them off. Yeah. yeah. He was, well, he was hitting a lot too. Right, he attacked, he, he was We gave him advantage in any way that we could. He was swinging a lot. And that's kind of one of those things that each party figures out. And as you have new PCs and new players come in, I've noticed we've had that problem. We've always, we've also always had someone who like, as the person who is that person now, like who is like, I want advantage. I swing a bunch. It is advantageous. It's advantageous for you me have to have advantage. You have elven accuracy. Yeah. yeah, I have elven accuracy. Connor always in his previous, in pr the previous campaign, mm -hmm. like aimed for advantage. And I think we will continue seeing that. So we'll just have to travel around the table. Right. I guess it's your turn next. But it's how you get advantage. <laughs> so I did not, and Amanda tried to remind me, and I feel really bad about it. I forgot to use my familiar for a lot of our final fight. Amanda even gave me a, like passed a note saying, hey, you, you have Squawk. <laughs> like, squawk uh, squawk so. was exceptionally scared. I would. I, that's how I'm gonna well, flavor it for if sure. If you think about it, I have a familiar with like a singular hit point. If anything hits my familiar, I've now lost that source of advantage. So I wanna pull out the familiar in very specific instances. But we really, in that last fight, had a lot of our melee people not against the wizard. So it was kind of like, oh, do I send my familiar out to help our melee person hit a zombie or a skeleton? Or do I wait for whenever somebody's next to that bad guy? I mean, having familiars are great for like combat, but I always like, like they don't have to be used. And I think that's really interesting, especially if you can flavor why they're not there in combat. They have one hit point, they're whacked and gone. If anyone yeah. uses a cone or a, a radial spell to do damage, if they're not in their pocket dimension, depending on your, your GM's ruling, uh, that can be a cause of instant death for those sort of creatures. Yeah. And I'm not an evocation wizard, so I can't even spell shape around my familiar. So if I cast fireball on a bad guy, my familiar goes away. And it's kind of, for a non-essential spell, because we always think of wizards having familiars, but for a non-essential spell, it's still 50 gold. Yeah. Yeah. The, and despite the fact that you recently obtained quite a bit, as you saw during that downtime, and we'll talk about downtime more, you all have the ability to spend gold. So that 50 gold adds up every casting. Yeah. 
wizards are expensive just by nature. Yep. Yeah, it's the only class that really requires you to spend gold in order to do what your class features are. Certainly, at least, if, especially yeah. if we ignore subclasses and we really focus just on class abilities, wizards have by far the most reference to gold and other mm -hmm. currencies being used for them. Your spells, um, Abjuration Wizard in particular, I was so shocked that so many of the Abjuration spells have a required gold cost to them. 100 gold here, 500 gold here, 1,000, 3,000 gold just as part of the consumed on you spell casting components. So it's kind of hard to say, yeah, I'm gonna be an abjuration wizard and <laughs> spend all of my gold on like one thing. No. There are no poppers with po with magical shields. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So about that last kind of adventure we went on going into Xerathal's finding it, going through the dungeon, getting to the dungeon in the first place, going through the dungeon before the dungeon. I kind of want to hear about your favorite moment from that, kind of the, the shining star. I I really liked having a chance to get like ph philosophical a bit or like moral quandrums like with your BBEG because like some BBEG is just monologue and they're just evil. But and like when you're those like- Those are fun. Sometimes you want, huh? You're making a mess. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, I was chortling a pencil You're... that wasn't a pencil. No. Uh, so sometimes you want to make a BBG is like, I'm going to burn the city and kill the orphans. You can't stop me. Mwahaha. But sometimes there can be more than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's fun to have a balance. And like, Xerathal was having a moment where you falter and also having, I really enjoyed it having the conflict stop for a moment near the end, where we all just stopped kind of, and then you turned around and pretty much teed up to finish the job. He did, yeah. he did Which threaten awesome. after you broke his trust to skin and uh, skin Ismini's sister and wear her like a cape. And I think at that point, it was kind of point of no return. Yeah. Whereas like, how dare you betray me? I'll murder everyone you've ever known and loved. <laughs> Makes yeah. uh, the, that killing blow a little easier. For me, that moment of almost dying, because, you know, I was- I You was, did. I was yeah. down to death saves. You and did death saves. How many- I didn't actually did roll any. I did not oh get a chance to roll a death save. Um, party stopped because it. Of party, because the party stopped it. But that's an interesting- Who's it, Who stabilized you? Xerathal stabilized Zarethal me. Xerathal stabilized you. That's very fun. The BB was not me. I have, yeah, <laughs> that is the newest, the, the, the most, I've never done anything like that. Stabilized the players as the big villain. Right, but I mean, for me going through that dungeon, kind of finding out what he was doing and why he was doing it, really, I was like, oh, I'm not playing like a morally good character necessarily. I have a, I have a strict code, but I'm not necessarily doing it for good reasons. Um, his arguments made sense and then I'm dying and it's like, oh, Okay, maybe I should like destroy everything instead of trying to, you know, argue, like kind of come to, I wanted to, as me as a player and me as a character, wanted to come to some kind of agreement with him that wasn't let's experiment on you and like see what happens from there. And let's just like kill people for more necromancy body torture stuff. Like, let's not do that. He, it, it was kind of fun and I'm curious specifically Chloe, you had, you and Victoria seem to have like this sort of, okay, wait, what, what is he saying about all of these things that have happened and how they're connected? Maybe that's something. And then he took down his meanie and I saw that shift in you. What, what, like for you, we've had kind of the reverse situation we talked about in the past when you were, when Elilier was kidnapped mm -hmm. and how the rest of the party jumped into action. We got a very fun, smaller session with Jake, Connor and Victoria chasing after you. Uh, to protect, to go and rescue you. But you kind of got the reverse there. What was that like for you as a player? I mean, I think it's it's really fun as a player to agree with the villain and then you have to ask yourself, like, there's two outcomes. Ultimately, like, you continue to agree with the villain and you have to either switch their or your allegiance. Okay. Or there's a point where you no longer agree with them and continue on a longer ritual purpose. It's time and for what, aggressive negotiations. Yeah, like, and what is that point? And like, is Meanie going down? Is clear that point of, oh no, we might lose. It's time for the like the measures, which like, 
hell does it normally do double switches? Like, I don't think she's normally a, like, bait and switch type person. So to have this is the point at which, I just think it was very interesting. It made a lot of sense to me in the moment. It's not one of those things you think you can pre-plan or like, right. you think if this specific scenario happened, what would my character do? But you know. Yeah, and because of the fact that we played together enough, I kind of knew what you were getting at. Yeah. Okay. I which did not it... know what was happening. We've really? We've been... I, I, Matthew, not just Xerathal, I thought I have to go, I cannot believe this. We're going with option E. The party works with Xerathal. <laughs> no. I I didn't even I didn't pass Victorian note. I didn't say anything out loud out of character. I fully just went, Victoria and I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons together for three years. We're playing characters that have known each you other a trust long Tal? time. I yeah. know that she knows what I'm going for and she will act on it. And the the <sighs> moments of fear I had sitting there waiting, going like I trust Victoria to do this, but like, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't happen? And then it happening was just like, so sweet. <laughs> I loved that moment because again, if you think about it, we've played characters who trusted each other in the past for hundreds of hours of time. Yeah. Like we, we played eight, six to eight hour sessions for years, <laughs> years together. Yeah. So we, we, we learned how to communicate with each other at the table. Yeah. And I, I don't never let it happen again. Never. <laughs> never. I could continue doing it. Until I will we stop talking out loud. <laughs> Thank you for the shards of power that I could use to further exhaust my character and continuously use spell slots just, I didn't have. You One of my favorite ways to make the equivalent of like um, when like gym bros like take their like protein powder scoop. Yeah, dry you scooping. were just doing that between You turns. were eating whey and choking? I was dry scooping um, pre-workout. How much olive oil does this mini drink? <laughs> this mini drinks like a cup of olive oil a day. We've gone full like bulking mode now <laughs> after that. It was, a, it was wonderful to see the two of your characters work so well in concert. And now I want to say something here for our watchers, just so they're aware. I have Clella and Victoria here for footnotes tonight but we're gonna be talking in the future with some of our other players, because I have to say that during the course of that fight, I think everyone had a really solid moment, either role play or mechanics, sometimes a mix of both. Uh, seeing, just an example, Silas confronted with an enemy who he was physically incapable of hurting mm. and still protecting two of his party members, keeping them away from Gwyn, Wynn, and Laurentius yeah. was superb. Yeah, and I would like to, over the next kind of month or so, talk to everybody about this because hitting your first BBEG is such a big moment as a player. Yeah. I know for a DM, I'd love to hear about what your favorite moment in all of what we did to get to Xerathal was. I know you've got a lot of moments that happened. The ceiling was pretty crazy. Like yeah. when we sealed them on, like I did not see that coming. I <laughs> I was very happy with how the, that that entire. There's a lot of encounters, and I think I, yeah, that might be there might be a day. Maybe if we ever have one where we don't have a, a guest, we want to go through some of these big events. Pick a favorite child now. Pick your favorite encounter. Yeah, pick oh, your favorite child. <laughs> everyone has favorite children. It's fine. Oh no. Hi mom. <laughs> Hi mom. <laughs> Well, that exists, and I'm gonna <laughs> spray bottles for it. Oh man, I'm not indicting myself on that one. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But you did. You, I, I really want to say that all of the party members they they did a great job, both demonstrating understanding of their characters. There was some excellent role play, and in the end, all of that combined, in a bit of deception, resulted in a victory, and a victory against a fifteenth uh, level spellcaster. I really want to make that. Very clear. Oh, I'm sorry, a 14th level spellcaster, but a 14th level spellcaster with undead backup. Can I also just say that I rolled so poorly on that final damage? I was like actively <laughs> like I was. I had a moment where, as a car as a PC, I'm like, oh, I did it. I killed the guy. But I went, oh man, I rolled such a bad die. <laughs> it's it's an interesting thing with your because you yeah. roll so many dice. Yeah, you have the highest. Now you don't have the, the, the like the, the, your distribution is actually pretty consistent because of how many dice you have, yeah. but you have the biggest possible range with those extremes of all ones or all maxes. Right, because yeah. if you're rolling one die and you're rolling a one every time, it's, it sucks, but it's way worse to roll a fireball and roll all ones. Yeah, I, have, I rolled pretty close to that. <laughs> yeah. I have seen in my experience a player using great, a great sword, so this is going back to Connor, using a great sword in a previous campaign, which is 2d6, uh, the damage dice for that. And watching a player roll that one in 36 chance, rolling one in one, mm. it it looks, it, it does seem genuinely painful for it. It's, now, 
it's interesting because that being said, I still support critical hits rolling twice the dice than doubling the result or doing the full plus a dice result, which are totally valid ways to roll. I the last one was how I learned. And yep. sometimes still how I mentally revert to despite the many, many years doing it another way. Pick and up more dice. Roll we more talk dice. about we before any campaign we run, we actually decide about those sort of house rules of, or just even mechanics questions. How would we like to roll crits? Because we could always change that. My friends a lot of times they like to roll a lot of dice. And the, you're rolling the most dice. The little yellow bag in front of you is just full of my current May I show of, it? Yeah. You're telling me there's not bells in there? Was not bells. It's a bell bag. <laughs> so cute. Was this from, it was from the Switch? Yeah, the Switch Animal Crossing game that whenever you pre-ordered New it's Horizons. So cute. I'm gonna put this, adorable. I'm gonna keep this right here. It's, it's, it's amazing. Adorable. It's beautiful. But it's very soft too. It is soft, I like it. But picking up more dice is more fun. I'm just gonna, that's gonna always be my argument for rolling double dice for crits versus rolling the one die and doubling it. Yep. That's my argument. I absolutely agree. And I do know that version of like maxing one die or something. Yeah, you max so, and then you add whatever you actually rolled. If you think about it, to use an example of a short sword, which is a D6 weapon, uh, if you crit, some tables will play where you, ro you roll normally and you add six, where six is the maximum of that die. Okay. And I think it's that's absolutely a fine way to play. Um, what it does is it gives you the it same It makes crits peak. always be powerful. Your crits will never be weaker, because yeah. in theory you could roll a critical, let's say, use that same d6. Um, you could roll two ones on a crit or a six on a non-crit. And so that case sucks, but mathematically is, le is less, likely than, um, less likely than you'd expect. But you could gamble instead and say, well, that means all the enemies are always gonna get a six first on their short sword crit. So why not just say that I roll better than my DM? And like, just think that and be like, well, my DM can roll double dice and I can, I know that you roll better than I do, but like, that's the mentality behind rolling double dice being fun for me. But yeah, it's a more powerful crit, but I want to pretend like I can roll two 12s, you know? Well, you, now you did, Kala, you, you may be our character who has to roll the most damage dice, yep. but yeah. last session, you so, didn't roll any. I, I, oh, please. Until, for, for now, like, you'll get, like, wizards. Wizards will get wizards there. Wizards will get there. Yeah. You'll be capped pretty much at eight. That's fair. Yeah. If you have a weapon that, if you get a weapon eventually that adds a damage die, then we'll be in business. Yeah. Because um, already I cast Fireball twice, I think. Fireball. So, so that was, uh, it was only one time. I cast Counterspell four times. Yes. That was, was a, a Counterspell it, heavy fight. It was, it, those shards of power did absolute work. Um, I'm pr New DMs who want to get into homebrew or just DMs who want to expand their magic item repertoire for whatever system they're using, mm -hmm. there's there's always a risk of doing, creating something unbalanced when you make a homebrew item. There are two big things that I, can, I have done in the past to sort of test an item to see if it's fine. Giving an item a downside, a downside that actually affects your characters, such as mm -hmm. exhaustion, you know, giving, giving someone the ability to to lose, like, lose levels of exhaustion, or gain levels of exhaustion, or make an item cursed. Those sort of negative things are one option. The other is just make things consumable. Consumable items are problems once. So I basically ran out of spell slots multiple times because we first come in. Mm -hmm. Finally, Yaddlegurt. I do the Yaddlegurt. That's a magic circle, cast Yaddle a third level spell. Use the Pearl of Power ring that Gwen Wen made with the infusion. I know that I used two shards of power. I hadn't used any more third level spell slots after the fight. And I used two shards of power and I used up those spell slots for them. So that's five third level spells cast. I will never get to do that again. That was so much fun. Like getting to cast multiple of your capped out spell level over what you can, never get to do that again. You can always go investigate whoever's making the shards of power. Or the olives. Or the olives, because you I was still gonna, have the olives. I was gonna start eating olives next if it kept going on. I just, the, the image of you just crunching your- <laughs> Olives are better and worse. They have a higher peak and a worse downside. Yeah. Um, but after the fight, we got to do downtime, which is always something I really love to do, purely because downtime, you get to ask yourself the question of, I don't have to worry about anyone else's stuff. Yeah. I can technically do whatever I want as a character. The like, party split up. I don't have to worry. Like, if you want to, you can not worry about the plot. You can just do things that you wanted to do as a player. Like, or you can advance the plot if you, you want to. You can go paint noblemen around the town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So, given two more weeks, what would you have done with your downtime? <gasps> That's a uh, vile question. That is so tough because I will admit, sometimes I'm the person that for downtime, I am like, I want to do this one thing and assist other people. But this was one of the maybe rare times that you I went, did a great job here is a laundry list of things I would like to check off as many of these boxes as mm -hmm. I can. So like I had things that I could have definitely done. I'm still that way. In our previous campaign, I had a project I worked on the entire campaign and that was like my downtime for a large portion of the campaign. And I love having that. I want that. I want to say, no, 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 you're going to take eight weeks of time from me. My eight weeks are on this task. Now, like, there's even a, there's a candidate. And of course, in no way have decisions been made, uh, that sort of thing. We'll see the campaign goes, but you started working on your underground hideout. <laughs> Ralnor started. Well, Ralnor started eating dirt. <sighs> okay, Ralnor's adorable. He's so fun to make I stupid sounds. I would love to know what he is, but he's adorable. I just, I, I have no clue, and I'm just excited to find out what Ralnor is. I've not thought about it. I'm letting Wait, it happen now. I'm gonna put some Ralnors in the chat. Ralnors in the chat. But it is one of those things. It's like cute pet. Great. I love it. It is fun. Ralnor is still relatively small. Ralnor will glow, grow a little bit larger um, and could be potentially useful in a combat situation in the future. Will Ralnor get mount sized during the campaign? Or can Ralnor even get mount sized? Is the other question. That question's so hard to answer not knowing what he is. And you the, don't know, like, you could try to wrap He will agent. become at least a small sized creature. He's currently a tiny sized creature. You could catapult Ralnor. You could not. No. Catapult is pounds. pounds How much does he weigh? Uh, Ralnor's probably about 20 pounds. So you'd have to catch you a can level, upcast. Level you catapult. can upcast catapult. Isn't and, it five per level? I will tell you that this. If we could teach Ralnor to use the spicy and sour bombs, would you let us do that? He would eat them. There's a there was a if thing we could where teach him not to do that. There, I don't want to say which mil, which government commissioned them, but there was there were like these animals that they strapped bombs to to go dock, to dig under tanks or something, and they kept blowing up their own tanks. <laughs> it was terrible. Please don't. Please don't give Ron more bombs, is what I heard. Although he is immune familiar. to fire damage. We're not. Familiars could carry bombs. So <laughs> there is a thing that I learned in a different campaign from our DM involving familiars and dragon's breath. <laughs> yes, so Dragon's Breath is a spell that you now have access to, as it was in Xerathal's, uh, Xerathal's spellbook, and can be cast on something like Ralnor or Squawk, because it's not an attack action. Right. I can hear I, the oh, gears going. I didn't think just about. So you know. I didn't think about Ralnor as an option. I only thought about Squawk. Oh, yeah. Well, now you have more. And you have whole can I cast it on a Hoot? Charles? Sure. Yes. Okay, cool. Cast on me. And you know that Jake's first question is, can I shoot out of my trunk? <laughs> yes. I, yes. Would, I would vote yes, anyway. I'm sitting in Jake's seat, and I can tell that he would say yes. I can feel it in my bones. Jake, if you're listening, yes, you can do Dragon's Breath through your trunk. Now, I'm not going to take a bardic option and say you can fire it out of other places, but I will say that anywhere you can breathe out of is a, is a valid option. So if you... So your nose. Yes, like if you were like a weird alien and we were okay, playing... Pop but, your ears. <laughs> You know, I consider, you know, if someone, if someone really wants it's like, I've been talking about my ear pressure problems for days. <laughs> it's like, okay, chewing gum, and then, <gasps> like, that's, maybe we would talk about it. But realistically, that's we horrifying, them. and I hate it. Shooting fire out of your ears? Popping your ears. Ugh. That's worse than Have the you... shooting fire thing? What? <laughs> yeah. You don't like fire. Let's spend the next two hours delving into Victoria's deal with this. I don't <laughs> like it. Oh, okay. I do not want my eardrums to burst. Oh gosh, that's not what we mean by popping your ears. I don't care. Okay. Well, we did have downtime. Uh, both both of the two of you had some activities you did on your own, but actually, in this particular for this downtime was a little more linked to specifically the two of you uh, worked together a lot. That first section we had, where Ismini was affectionately, effectively. Affectionately and effectively taking <laughs> care of Lilie. Thank you. And that second half, you all went on a trip. I was so excited when uh, you y'all when y'all pitched the Tayrilla thing because I hadn't originally thought about it when I said you get some downtime. What do you do? 
What brought that thought into mind? It was great. You did a fantastic job, both of you. Admittedly, I just really like the idea of like, I have to recoup and I don't want to stare at the same ceiling. I would like to go recoup at a spa. And the closest thing I have to a spa is the cool Wood Elf City. Yeah. I mean, so, they are, like, if they're going, hippies. If you're going to go recover somewhere, like being out in nature, it's sort of, you know how like when people used to be sick, they would go out to the country? We'll get some, some fresh salt air. Okay, so we had, we've air. talked about the, the, the humors, we've talked about alchemical reagents, and now we're talking about like how the country you air is going to help you. think I would use my degree? <laughs> <laughs> you think I would bring Victorian medicine into the Dungeons and Dragons? Absolutely fantastic. You, you went, to, you went yeah. and got high with a bunch of hippies. I, I am clear. sanguine, just for the humorous question before anyone asks. Victoria? I'm not gonna put anything into this. Oh, I meant about downtime. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, again, as a downtime person, as somebody who wants a project to work on for a very long time, and just that painting every single time we do footnotes, I can't help myself but stare at it. Do you want me to go get it? Okay, please do. All right. Um, Cause I'm getting distracted in his eye. <laughs> and it, it's real distracting. I was wondering what you were looking at. I, I, every time I zone out when looking at it. When you said painting, I thought you meant like the painting in the campaign. And I was like, no, do you have the, a copy the, here? The Squidward. We've replaced Matthew. The bold and brash. It distracts me so much. So this is what Victoria looks at every week. Uh, now this is not something you can normally see. This is some sp real special behind the scenes stories to D4 It's content. what everybody <laughs> over here sees above our heads. Every, so. That must be what they're looking at the whole right. time. And so, sorry, uh, this is Bold and Brash, an excellent piece by Squidward Tentacles, and is just off TMTM. the camera, that TMTM, TM, just oh. off camera, right up, like, so when you look at Chloe and Victoria, it is above those pieces of art where you can see the, the Monster Manual and Rise of Tiamat artwork. And this is what our players have to stare at while telling me passionately about their strong feelings about how they want to save the city or work with the vigilantes. Amanda, Jake, and Connor look at that every single week. It's majestic. It distracts me so much during footnotes. Leave a mystery to what is above this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They've seen more of this wall, yeah. but there are other mysteries and even some new artwork in the mix that you'll be seeing here over the next couple of months that I'm really excited to show. What? Downtime. I was, I was given a downtime. It's not there anymore. I was given a downtime project. It is uh, Zarethal's Notes. Thank you again, Elle, for Oh my gosh. Retrieving there was we don't talk about that yet. I no. am very... played a wizard for a very long time. Yeah. I see notes, see spell books. Gotta have them. I just Elle. have to have them. L was dying. Blow up the notes if it means saving L. We we have. I'm also a very speedy character, so going. I have spell slots left. I think you both earned bicycles over the course of that whole. What you did of various yeah. things. Again, me casting fireball was just me really taking again on my end a leap of faith, saying I really hope this is what Clella actually means by we're surrendering. <laughs> it's no, we're not surrendering. <laughs> but I have these. I have these notes now, and I, in my crazy brain, am already going like, I have all these theories about what's actually behind the scenes, what the cause behind all of this is. You have always been a puzzle solver, though. In our previous campaign, you are the, I connected the threads, I figured it out. Flip side, I'm also the person who thinks everything's a monkey's paw. I it will, is a blessing and a curse. I will say. It is a curse. I'm both excited to hear what you, as well as our other players, have to have theories about what, Zarethal had this idea, and for those of you who may not remember, because it's been two, uh, two weeks now, mm -hmm. this idea that several major creatures, deities, and just powerful folks from outside of the world, so from other planes of existence, mm -hmm. have all been disappearing. Maybe there's a common thread or some existential threat that is on its way. I'm excited to hear yours and the other players' theories, but I'm also excited to hear from everyone here watching on Twitch or watching later on our YouTube uh, what you all think may be going on, if Zarethal was just off his rocker or if maybe something bad is coming. I think NASA is on the moon. Actually, that's Ibra Karen, Guardian of the Silver Dawn and the Paragon of Elvenkind. Comma, NASA. Comma, NASA. <laughs> NASA, it's true. <laughs> What's going on? What, what, what I think? If you want to share, or we can go talk about the fish and trip. Elves. It's all the elves' fault. Elves yeah. have been involved in every one of these major events, specifically elves from Gren. 
Elf from Gren have been involved in all of these major events over time because we are playing in the world we know and the world you'll grow to know as time goes on and, and every one of these events has happened in past that we know of that we've experienced elves from Gren Chalcedonian elves is what oh. we call them have been involved Dolch I forgot Dolch. I was just Orcus and Torian. was a piece of the puzzle. Torian. Torian, too. So to help our folks Sorry. at home. <laughs> no, we, we are putting it so all together we in the background. We are piecing it together. I, in, I'm piecing it together. In there were about real life. 10 events, I believe, that you discovered from your current study over several weeks. <clears throat> Actually, over about a month of pouring over Zarathal's notes that relate to these 10 different great powers or really. Uh, magic ar artifacts disappearing, holy relics being destroyed, gods dying, angels falling, demons being disintegrated. And your theory, because you know you, Victoria, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so sorry. I know this world. Victoria is familiar with several of these events, and the events that she is familiar with do, did in some way include an elf. And so that's an interesting connecting thread between some of them. A Chalcedonian. There an are, elf from Grin. A, there are other shared Grin. themes between some of these, and some of these may or may not have all of the themes you've discussed so far. But what the problem is, is that I can make all these guesses based off of events that I was a player character at. Um, I don't know about the other events. So now what I need to do is give time to researching the ones that Ismini wouldn't know about. Uh, Ismini would know some of them. Ismini wouldn't know even all the ones that I know as a player. So spend time researching those. And then the ones that I as a player and I as a character don't know about to see if I can get more of these pieces. Because I'm going to say it. One of my favorite sessions we had was whenever we did a trial. We did all this research leading up to a trial <laughs> yes. to find out well, who was guilty and who was innocent. Love there were that. vampires involved. There were vampires involved. You, you know were what? evil. Always. It might, great. I, everyone has an evil point there. It, it might be time for us to go to the library finally. We've been in Elts for a while, and we have in multiple points gone, we should go to the library. Gwynwin went. But Gwynwin Gwyn went, went, went and didn't take the rest of our of the Arcanists. I'm yeah, hurt. You're M4. a smart party. <laughs> there is a lot of intelligence. Isn't there not a lot of wisdom? Like, it's okay. No, I have a lot of wisdom. No wisdom, but two in 20s. And I'm in, in 16. Yeah. yeah and we've got somebody bringing down the absurd. average. But. Yeah. Really high for most folks. Um, <laughs> is your dexterity 20? No. Not yet? Okay. I don't have any 20s yet. Okay. Not yet. Just wait. You bounce off the walls. Win. Yeah, uh, Thorin is bringing our collective, collective average, average down. into down. <laughs> what is it? Silas' is int, actually? Silas, ten. Silas wants to say 10 intelligence. Thank you now, for being normal, uh, Silas. Jake will correct me when he uh, when he checks this out. If I'm wrong, maybe he'll give me a trunk lashing. We'll find out. <laughs> now, one specific event I did want to mention from that list of Zarathal's notes, before we talk about the fish and trip, because I do want to talk about the fish and trip, mm -hmm is you seem to have a very averse response to learning about a collection of creatures from a place known as Apexia, how they had been experiencing a difficulty. Clola, would you like to explain, ex expand upon why you don't like Apexia? I don't like dinosaurs. I don't like them. There are a lot of dinosaurs on Apexia. I had a very specific experience with a certain ride in Disney World as an 11 year old. <laughs> this we didn't me. have the context <laughs> of. <laughs> It has stuck with me for many years, and I don't do dinosaur stuff. There I don't are, do dinosaur movies. I don't do dinosaur pictures. I don't do dinosaur dire dinos. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh, Dungeons and Dinos is what we're going to call the next campaign. And dinos. Clella will not be there. It would seem. Uh, <laughs> they would prefer to not. This is shot. me getting ridden off at the show. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like next. We're muscling you Dino out. Dino Island. <laughs> If I ever disappear for a month, all of a sudden you'll go to Dino Island. <laughs> <laughs> You're out sick, it's Dino time. We're gonna tr to teleport to Dino Island for a singular session. You know the water around Apexia? Also dinosaurs. Probably, it's I would really imagine. really unfortunate. It's, it's the sky also. The Neoplerodon. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I don't like this. Dinosaurs that can swim. I... Because then they can get other places. Yeah. Um... I don't want to live anywhere near the coastline near Dino Island. Oh, Gorgorim. Sharks exist in IRL, too. I'm just putting it on this side of the map and not on that side of the map. It's northwest of Gren. It's not northeast. There are magical protections that prevent what you're discussing. Okay, so no Dylans. Apexia is weird. Dino Islands. But maybe we'll find out in this campaign, or maybe it won't. Right. Uh, we'll have to wait for a one-shot or another campaign to visit there. Clella list one-shot. Yeah. <laughs> now, Adon paid to rent a schooner Mm -hmm. You all got to head out onto the Tinkto Bay and do a bit of fishing. This was 
fun for me as a DM because making a mini game is a blast. But since I know it cha it bends the D and D five E rules, and it also has some unexpected quirks. I'm curious for the for player side how going fishing, how catching that big eel and facing the Quero monster, how all that was for you. I will say this: I love any time we have a mini game, and we can absolutely just play the mini game. But then we will usually play a round or two, and then some will inevitably go, how can I use my weird magic BS to augment the mini game? Yeah. Uh, how can I break this is a wonderful question for both speedrunners and D&D players mm -hmm. to ask. Like for me, I immediately, I was like, this is kind of sword shaped. I bet I get a weapon burster. <laughs> I forgot you weapon burst a rod. You just made a basically uh, a depth charge. <laughs> It's it's the temptation, right? Because if you've got if you've got magic, if I have <laughs> magic as me and I go fishing as me, you're not touching a fishing. Rod. I'm gonna figure out how to use Matt. I'm gonna have my mage hand over here doing the fishing. If or Tommy Ladrone had come on the fishing trip, he would have shot his gun into the he water. He would have shot the fish with a gun. <laughs> like, Which I pull up my gun. <laughs> It's just like, you have all these abilities, you want to use them even whenever, and you know what the thing is, the funny thing is, I was going to, but we didn't get to my turn because of what Jake rolled, <laughs> I was going to not use magic and be like steadfastly fishing. Like I was joking around like, oh, I'm going to use magic, fine. I'm going to use magic, I'm like, wait, no, I'm playing a wizard, let's, let's not use any magic this on the This delicate Chalcedonian lady sitting back with a big wide hat and a fishing rod just twerk, I mean, dangling your legs over the side of the yep. boat? This is actually something I think about often. So like in D&D, &D, because of the nature of it, it often is implied that between sessions, there is time where the characters in the tapestry of the fiction, right, mm -hmm. would be talking to each other, staying up late at night and chatting before bed. Sure. Like eating meals. Like You've painted each other's nails off camera. Yeah, like this stuff happens off camera. And so I like when you get to bring it into camera and it's like, no, like, wizards have days off from doing magic. Right. Like, we leave our armor behind because we're just going, like, it It we're, enriches the fiction for me. Just right. If you guys went to, had a Disney World session, which we absolutely can never do. Yeah, that's true. We cannot go to Disney World on stories unless Disney reaches out to us. But uh, Disneyland. <laughs> but if you guys went to a theme park, if you guys went to a, a, a carnival. Seven Flags. Seven Flags. If you went to Seven Flags, Seven Flags over Chalcedonia, you would. Ooh, that's ooh, not a good. That's not a good thing. <laughs> you would absolutely. I can't. I can't imagine someone going there with their full armament. So, for example, yeah. Silas, who often carries three or four different weapons because of his size and the versatility of a fighter, I can't imagine him having more than maybe. Yeah, sure. I have a hammer dangling on off my hip, but I don't have the old full shield that he carried. Maybe he's not wearing full plate. Well, it's yeah. hard to conceptualize D and D characters as modern people because it's mean he's always walking around with a wand, which is just a loaded gun. <laughs> but like that, sure. people do that in real life, right? But then <laughs> what you think about it is like there's seven of us all wandering Sorry. around. <laughs> I can picture you easily all at Disney World. Well, no, I, I can picture you guys carrying carrying a sword in your hip is not the same thing as car wearing full plates. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. Also, weirder. like. Kevlar your main everywhere thing, you go. I guess you have a wand, but you're also carrying around a big book, yeah. which is extremely, if I just saw a person carrying around a big book, I would assume that they could do the Macarena and send me to another dimension. Right. Yeah. I'm I gonna think do I it. Made, I think I made I'm gonna do it. No, don't, don't finish it, don't finish it. This was the time to oh, okay. invest in special effects. <laughs> I, I don't have, I was, I was regretting not having my big book from over there and I'm gonna slam it on the table. <laughs> I just need a green screen. <laughs> just shimmy on the Erase door. Clella. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, like, but it's interesting because it, downtime and little mini games help you mm -hmm. remind, help remind us even that like, we know each other. Yeah. And there's also times where our characters, like our characters are doing things when we're not controlling them. Ex think about it that way. Yeah. Explain why Silas and his meanie or Elle and Gwen Wynn or Thorn and Elle, explain why we all are friends. Yes, we've been around each other for months, but why are we all friends with each other is another interesting, that's why I like travel sessions. It's why I like being on the road because you oh, have- Oh, night watch with, you the, have with night the pair watches. that talks the least. Yes, I love doing a night. We even throughout our other campaign, if I didn't feel like I had spent a lot of time 
time with a particular character, I would say, let's go on a solo, like a duo mission, or let's go and do this thing together. Let's go shopping together because you want to establish these bonds. I've actually done something about like this as a DM mm -hmm. with a pair of characters who are excellently well, uh, they're excellently played, and their their players get along well, but they had the characters hadn't had one on one time very much. Mm -hmm. So if you actually look at uh, a couple times where we had a cutaway or ending a downtime where we had players working on the roof, working on the warehouse, mm -hmm. very often I actually had Silas and Laurentius were together. Yeah. And it was just another little thing. And that's that's now has a sort of bit between the two of them. Right. Where like, he's gonna fix it. Because that's, yeah. that's the least in common. Because if I look at the table, I see Silas and Ismini kind of being like the protector of another player. And then you've got Elle and Thorn and Gwenwyn and is Meanie who all have magic. And so like if you look at the table, there's like a little small character or mechanical thing that ties a lot of people together. But I would say, yeah, other than being the two men in the party, there's really not, they, they hadn't really had a whole lot of things You know, I common. genuinely didn't think about that. No. Oh, like that is an easy way to pair them. It's like just two, dude just bros. guys being dudes. <laughs> dude bros, they're going to dudes night. I mean, everyone wants to go to dudes night with a Don. That's true. You I, go, I would like to go to dudes night with a Don. Yeah, I, do that's it. the problem. Don't do the voice. <laughs> Cole, I can't handle it. You're laughing because you thought about the voice. You thought about the voice. About I have, Adon's essence has wriggled into your skull so much that me referencing Adon- He lives Adon, in here now. He lives in your mind. Rent Is he paying rent? rent? Oh, we're on the same He's place. not paid rent in, He's, uh, frankly, months. Wow. I'm just gonna send him a Venmo request at this point. <laughs> oh no. I mean, you can't evict anyone during, with the, the way the world is right now. <laughs> Could be inhumane. Kick <laughs> You guys caught a big eel. Like I rolled, so I rolled the, the fish you were Sushi. getting higher on the table. The way this works, kind of behind the screen, and I'm not gonna wriggle too much because I think we're gonna you guys go might go fishing again. again yeah. Is that I have a table with some results of different things that can show up. Really low ones had things like a boot or driftwood. A boot. Animal Something. Crossing fishing. Newspaper. Right. I I played Stardew Valley. <laughs> Um, but higher up, there were some fish that were about, you know, that, that were relatively common. People would eat them very often. And some of them were like from my notes of what did people eat in else, but really good rolls. Then I had dice that I was rolling to see how big they were. And so that eel, that eel was very large. What's the lobster equivalent in else? Or is it just lobster? Well, there's a lot of, there's a, there's Wait, a bustling what? crab trade, but you want to go to the east end where the f major fish markets are. Are crabs considered like a delicacy in else? No. Or are they considered so common? So, or are they like more like common? Like how lobsters used to be right. in before like the 90s. Before we overfished so them. Most, yeah. so fish is much as common like to the north where you all originally came from because you're so far from the actual coast. Yeah. And I guess kind of a little flash into our world building, the the kingdom of Issel, where you're from, is actually located roughly in the center of a continent with several rivers that were created magically that actually travel towards it. And so it, well, it has access to those things because they have to be ferried up river, it's quite expensive to get fish. Here, no, it's kind of the inverse where there's not as much, there's not, it's not as mm, amenable to having large livestock. Right, so you're getting less burgers, but you're getting far more shrimp rolls. Yes, burgers. Getting... <laughs> burgers and shrimp rolls, famously medieval dishes. Absolutely. Medieval dishes. You know what I'm getting at. It's not do. medieval, also. It's absolutely not medieval. Uh, I, we, one thing we talked about quite early on in world building in last campaign, and in this one, is that due to the presence of magic, there is some uh, anachronism when it comes to technology. Not there... an electric industrial revolution. It's hard. There, the one big th major thing is there's several powerful people in our setting who have pushed for literacy in several different kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And so there's a generally more educated, even though there is still a, a peasant or there's a, sort of a feudal divide, mm -hmm. there's like a pe peasant class, it's more likely to have literacy, thorn excluded. Um, there's more variety in food. He can read picture books now. He's actually able to read quite a bit better. We did some- What's his grade some... reading level? Like- Oh, I mean- Like if he took a, like a test. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna burn our only, uh, our only drow-born character. You gotta wait till I uh, get Connor on. Okay, <laughs> well we can Connor ask, on. cause here's my thing, right? He was learning over six weeks how to read from a place where he- He's presumably seen writing his whole life. Right, but he has such a low end that he couldn't read before. So I mean, but really, like the low end is like the mechanics representation of like he didn't have access to like yes. schooling. 
right so but if you try to teach anybody how to read in six weeks how far do they get i don't really know he went and helped his uncle for his downtime can we i know that was can adorable. we talk about the fact that thorne is, has a really like yeah we would thorne have some would dark have stuff thorne has such a sweet like he's been he's been really kind in a lot of his moments this is a, like not that our last party was not very good because they were like greater good focused yeah, greater um, good focus. We are yeah. much more about, I feel like, the small people and much more just, like, good overall, despite the fact that not all of our characters are technically good aligned. I tossed him 600 gold, not necessarily entirely just to be helpful to him, but just because I hate the mob so much, <laughs> you know? It's one of those... Those Ladrones, you gotta deal with them at some I, point. I hate the Ladrones. But that's I, the thing, is, like, we all... Hey, kill your friends' move along. boyfriend? We don't need to talk about the Ladrones. Kill Pluvia's boyfriend? I can't kill Pluvia's boyfriend, but I can break you them can up spare first. spare one Ladrone. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy is not in charge. Tommy is not. Tommy's not smart enough to be in charge. No. What? He pulls out his gun every time he hears a loud noise. <laughs> this Tommy. I saw gun. some shit gonna... in Gale Oh my god! <laughs> this Tommy gun. I just put that together. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I didn't realize. Now you do the Don voice. <laughs> so. Going along with that, you're you're generally helpful, and you've been kind of been doing a good job about these small scope problems, while also fighting the evil necromancer who's threatening a city. Yeah. You're actually in the next Elts campaign, uh, the next Elts session, rather. You're going to be going on a trip, one that was kind of alluded to about Nothing eight sessions ago. Huh? Nothing. Continue. Oh. So. <laughs> You're going back traveling. You're heading off to go and return an artifact to its people. There isn't, as far as you know, some sort of violent stakes going on. This is a very different sort of adventure, I think, than what you've done in the recent past. How are you both feeling? What are we looking forward to? What are we worried about? I'm excited for some heart-to-heart -heart campfire chats, which is my favorite part of traveling. Yep. Um, it's, the, it's the thing I missed when we got to the point in our last campaign, when we started just teleporting places. Yes. We didn't get to do travel montages, mm -hmm. which, like, while they can be tedious, they have never been tedious at this table. So. Yeah. It's fun. Um, yeah. but yeah, so we get to do the, how does night watch go? Who gets their one-on-ones? Who needles the other person? Yeah. Who, who is, who is sleeping? Who is not Silas sleeping? has to walk. We don't, we don't have any full. <laughs> we keep tr offering to. Find a Clydesdale. Yeah, we want we want to find him a little Clydesdale. But get him a, a uh, one of the dwarven goats. Get him a dwarven goat. Mm -hmm. How big is a dwarven goat? Mm, or is it just about strong? a head and a half taller than a normal horse? They're huge. Why are their goats so big? Why are they they're so, so small? Big? Because they have to carry dwarves <laughs> who weigh more than people. Us. And they wear full plates. Dwarves are people too. <laughs> yeah, they're these massive goats. And I don't mean they're, so they're not <laughs> rams. They don't have huge horns necessarily. Just picture like a little step. <laughs> Do they go up like the? Do they scale? They're not common. I just Dude, they're a very okay. fun little. Can we bit of, find a you know, dwarven goat? You've only seen them in paintings. I would like to remind. Actually, multiple paintings in three different campaigns you've seen where these giant goats were. I don't think we've ever had one appear on screen. We've never had one appear I... in a session. But <laughs> I was focusing on the false hydra. I'm sorry. You know. Oh my gosh. Continue. <laughs> I was going, but now you've, you've, you've saddened me. I'm sorry. Because we need to deal with that conversation someday. I'm just not going to. I'm just going Reasonable. to avoid it until I die. <laughs> so you know how like those goats can like walk up like things like I'm entirely sorry. sideways? Can dwarven goats do that? Can dwarven goats do that? So you know in video games We're gonna there's a mountain the other thing. and there's a path to go up and you I've just, been playing like, Elden Ring for the past few weeks. <laughs> And sometimes I, there's a, no spoilers at all. Um, if you've watched the trailer, you know more than the story will tell you. Sometimes oh. there are tall mountains or inclines and you have access to a mount in that game, uh, a sort of goat-like horse thing. It's a weird little creature called Torrent. And whenever I want to get over, whenever I wanted to while exploring, get over something that, Torrance? huh? I keep thinking his name is Torrent. Whenever you try to get over a, uh, a tall incline, you can sometimes kind of, glitch your way over things or find the perfect angle. Skyrim. And I found that yelling Skyrim while playing Elden Ring helps get over things. Also with Pokemon Legends, you were yelling Skyrim. I did also play Pokemon Legends and yell Skyrim. So we're going to use the goats. Also with antlers. <laughs> the Stantler has antlers and yeah. like goats have horns. We have a theme, guys. We had a theme. We came back in full circle. So we will, in Dungeons and Dragons, Skyrim slash glitch our way up a mountain and down. 
That's you are ghosts. going to the mountains. <laughs> we are going oh to the mountains. Oh my goodness. Yes, you are all so, heading to the Red Rock Monastery. So again, goats. Can they walk up mountains like this? They, they, but they kind of like look like they're not really walking. They but have it's a climb like speed, a... yes. Mm. It is does a limited Silas climb speed. have a climb speed? Silas does not have a climb speed. Can, can a Silas sp- get a climb speed? Yes. Spider? There's a spell, but I don't remember if it's just I'd spell. like to mention Alex does not approve of spider climb existing. Because can why would you want to emulate a spider? Can we cast spider climb on Silas, attach a sled to him, and have him pull us up the mountain? <laughs> All right, before we end tonight, do you have any predictions about this upcoming adventure? We're starting a brand new adventure. I predict at least one goat joke. I predict me asking that question again. <laughs> also, um, someone's going to make a really awkward joke at a Goliath at the monastery. Yeah. Probably. I absolutely expect microaggression. I don't know which player it's going to be, but I can say it's not going to be as mean or Gwen as win. <laughs> I would like to let everyone who's watching on <laughs> Twitch or on YouTube if this is up, when this is uploaded at a later date that this next session of our ELTS campaign is going to be an excellent jumping on point. Even if you haven't caught up ever, everywhere, uh, everything before, when we start a new chapter of our story, a new major arc, um, we are going to be reintroducing our characters, doing a little bit of a getting to know you moment at the start. And this is a brand new adventure with, ne- with, th- with Zarethal dead, our party is going to be facing off against some brand new threats, making some new friends, oh, and getting lots of exciting loot. Mm-hmm. Any last thoughts, y'all? I'm excited for it. It's been the first 25 sessions. Fantastic. Cannot wait to see what the next 25 are going to be. 25 more? And 25 more. 25 after that. Oh, yeah. And forever. And ever. I'm trapped here in my own personal (laughs) nine hells. You have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us for tonight's footnotes. Uh, I've been Matthew. Clola. Victoria. We'll see you this Friday. Bye, y'all. Bye.